How's it going guys? Welcome to the Panda Cup number 11. I'm joined by none other than Panda Global's Akamaru Rat. How are you doing Akamaru? Uh, hold on. Okay, I think I'm here. I muted you. Let me fix it one second and we should be good to go. Okay, I think we're good. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the invite, Louis. I'm very excited to watch some expert Shadowverse before. I don't know why I went French there. That was, that was kind of <laughs> I want to see you get new ideas on the new meta and uh, hopefully you'll do good and uh, I'll take him to Rage. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I always wanted to cast with Akamaru. Uh, he's played in a lot of Panicles before. You've won one of them before too, so it's good to have you now I... as a caster. I'm actually the the OG main villain arch nemesis of the Panda Cup oh. because I beat the plot armor main protagonist Jordan. The Jordan, right? Yeah. And then you went on to beat Crumption too. That was in the finals, right? I remember. Yep. Uh, t twice I had to. Yeah, I reset the, the bracket dolomation. because this is donation. Let's get this going. This action going. Yeah. Go. Uh, True Mesh is a part that I think people are like. Some people love him. Some people hate him. Like, yeah, you put 30 points in your deck, but you essentially draw two cards a turn, right? So Yeah, and there are matchups where Troop of Master actually just wins way more than Maisha. Uh, where, matchups where you just want to clear as many tokens as you can. Perhaps I'll play with you gives for you a so while. much survivability, case, gives you so much cast, move. have full clear multiple See, you times that me. you just hold on to turn 10, hold one Evo for your <laughs> Maishas, and you're good to go. Or if you evolve the Shenna, it's even better. because you Shenna die, die, Yeah. Like, Shutting uh, down. the average should be that you draw a card and you draw a puppet. So, like, does he really dilute your deck if you draw twice a turn? Like, no, he doesn't, right? I think what happens is that you have players where, like, you'll draw three puppets in a row, and then you'll be like, oh, no, I now I draw only puppets. But you have times where you draw two non-puppets in a row, too, right? Absolutely. And here, since the Momo Jelly does not have the Luciana, she has to go for the Maisha game plan, so I would expect her to hold on to the Zivos for as long as she can. She might go Maisha Apostle next turn. So yeah. Dan is looking uh, to put some pressure here to stop that play. I would be very surprised to see everything else but Poseidon coming down here. So now he has to protect his ward, basically, so he doesn't lose to the Maisha. Okay, Galmux, good to Galmux Disciple. And then just start pushing damage, which would set up lethal for Genesis next turn. And he ends with a ward. That's a pretty excellent turn. Uh, I would say though that one health on that ward is extremely important. It does matter, yeah. Uh, that actually might be lethal. It is lethal. Oh, no, but uh, well, if she draws a puppet, she has to draw a puppet. That's the lethal uh, joy of destruction would be lethal even without the puppet. But oh, I do yeah, have to say. Joy. Dan's play would still end up losing, but it's a massive difference. We're talking about 30 puppets being an out for lethal uh, versus one joy of destruction out of... I don't know if she runs three. Let me double check that real quick. Uh, it is true. She does run three. So we're talking about 30 puppets versus three cards. So Dan should absolutely not have played More that uh, down there. Yeah, it was really interesting. In the first game, uh, Momo played super safe with the Aegis. In this game, she took a risk with the Meisha Apostle, knowing that she needed a risk to win the game. Oh, it only does 19 damage! Oh! Wait! Oh, so he was counting that. Interesting. Oh, maybe Den is just a genius then. Wow, then never mind what I said. That you know, was actually I was, correct. I was so sure it was gonna end the game. I didn't do that on Same. purpose. Yeah. Usually when Proof of Master evolves. Wow. Oh, to be honest, it's not turn 10, so we were both kind of biased, right? This is right. Not still turn 10. Because turn 10 Meisha would do 20 damage, but that was a turn 8 Meisha. Wow, just like that, then ties it up. I thought we were like moving on already. Oh, we a great as a turn 8, but I love the Axel. It's so good. Like, you get two followers, the followers are like better than regular two drops, and they guarantee you the look anyway. I think it's really, really good. Is so that the play the this option. turn though? I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say here the option is either draw another Apostle, just to make sure you have a turn 7 aligned, or to Dragonites and hope your deck is nice enough off the top. Okay, so he's going with the Axel Alwida. Does not get the Rush Follower. There is a bit of randomness in, you know, which one she summons. The Drain is not bad though, because that early aggression taking her hat, hey, at least he can heal off some of the damage. Uh, Man is doing his best to clear. He knows that anything he leaves no up further. could get returned with My the Okami. And when Okami can bounce a follow like Hoverboard, you're getting more card draw out of that. It's still pretty good. Yeah, and this is the problem when Sword goes out of Evos. 
And one of the reasons why Eleven Sisters with the Geno package is important, or the Geno Sisters overall, is because your Latham becomes a playable wound, so you don't have an Evo. Because Gengar is not going to stop doing this for the rest of the game, like, he's just going to block the Latham, so he's going to force you to the Dragonites and then, and then DC instead, so... Yeah, like, I was going to say, would you consider Evo in the face with the dog? Uh, I don't think it's necessary, uh, it doesn't necessarily put pressure on lethal. Uh, this forest deck runs a lot of storm followers, so yeah. you almost always guarantee two damage. Uh, not right, if you want to turn your evil into storm, into phase exactly. damage, you can do that anyway, right? Exactly. Here I think uh, Mango is forced to an awkward play, which is Ivory Sword also in its kind of the best. Or he can actually triple a loot and hope that he gets uh, good pings. A good ping would be, okay, I was going to say, not ping your combo, because the wolves yeah. represent a lot more damage. But at because least he now, got the second one. Okay, so one oh, wolf... Nice. It's that not gonna do 17 good. damage, but that was like the second best outcome out of I don't know maybe eight outcomes. So that was not very <laughs> bad. Okay, so let's see how uh, Gengar responds. I like the miracle, right? You get miracle so, with two more things. That bound. wolf is gonna get up so to eight attack. I would even can... say ignoring his uh, apostle. Honestly. Just ignoring but, it? Uh, since it, it's not Strength lethal not anyways, but it's well evolved. Yeah, and... I like clearing. Like, uh, Ivory is still a card, An you know. Take. Look at this ah, pressure. Ah, like, the sword's looking pretty good. I mean, the four's looking pretty good here. So what I was talking about, right? The Just once you can't play Latham, you're probably never going to play Latham that game, so it just becomes harder and harder. Yeah. I was expecting him to play Latham uh, the previous turn too, but he could It's hard play. because when you play him and you don't have Evo or Rush, it's just... I meant to say Accelerate, sorry, to play Lee okay, okay. and Accelerate. Just to accelerate. Yeah. But that still wouldn't be a clear on the Okamis, so he couldn't go for that way, unfortunately. So we'll see, yeah, uh, yeah. Gengar go one up. So here. Gengar takes game number one. That looked pretty convincing. Uh, to be fair though, like, Mango passed turn 3 and turn 4, so, you know, if he had a better start in hand, you know, that game might have looked different. I do think Machina Forest can be a solid deck, though. Uh, this game, you know, not looking good for Zero Fine, but he still did win his seven game, he could still definitely take the set. Of course. Also, we have to keep in mind, this game, he didn't have Unleash, right? That That is essential to his game plan. Uh, the game rate, I actually didn't do a lot of games with it but i noticed that taking notes of the win rate forget. my win rate was the difference okay this one's all me. if you draw on leash yeah, yeah, or not on turn three yeah it's so fan. crazy listen, because it's listen well it's tempo my but it is makes is you so much more consistent because more. you're drawing two cards right like such a difference the thing is like uh no matter what blood deck you are evil blood machina blood uh Bendis blood you always want on leash it's just but one of those cards, like, you will forever want it. Okay, so, uh, I wonder if we'll see the Zeus. Oh, well, actually, yeah. Yodin. I will amend the legends I think by Zeus, yeah. I would play Zeus. Well, Yodin is guaranteed, right? Uh, it'll be fun, <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, God. sure. I respect Yeah, there it. we go. I mean, you're not gonna lose, right? Even yeah. if you don't have Zeus, how do you... Oblivion! <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could you're technically tough. lose. Maybe. Yeah, like, uh, Zeus is a funny card. He He's just, to me, I, he's funny. Like, he's won me and lost me so many games. Yeah, both players also have a lot of respect for each other. I mean, they, yeah. this is uh, this is uh, they both understood that the game wasn't looking very good to zero fine at the moment he dropped that mono. Both yeah. players kind of understood was the silent nod of head of all right, you got me this time. Yeah, like as a competitive player, you've been there before. It's happened to you. You're like, all right, I understand what's going on. Tatra might be played in all rune decks, but this is the rune deck that could really abuse using Delta Cannon every single turn. This is where Tetra shines, and obviously this is why Psy Games designed it as it is. This is technically played as intended. And we see uh, then plays the Icarus, fetches the augmentation. Uh, such a difference that could do, being able to fetch the augmentation in deck. Yeah, it's essentially that why this virtual artifact, artifact deck is being played if it has come to this, uh, by then, I, I assume, fight. is the fact that Icarus Prepare is yourself. the backbone and allows him to draw the second what backbone the card of the deck. Without the without augmentation Delta deck being playable, with Icarus, it just makes that more consistent. So, uh, Gengar has a good Tetra play, but a couple things that I don't like about this, even though it was a good play, is that A, he didn't play Mechaworks Social on 5, so now, whenever he plays it, it's going to be awkward, and he might not be able to play it. And B, he has to expend the Delta Cannon, not get it back, and he already had played a previous Tetra. So me. this game, he's essentially not going to have those Delta Cannons either. Yeah. 
I, I heavily disagree with that play. Uh, again, we keep stressing that out, as you pointed it out quickly. Delta Cannon, you need it. Uh, you might think you don't, but then you play games and you'll realize that, yes, you do need that card yeah. for extra damage. And not only that, extra mech card being played for your Zealot spell boost, for your mecha, uh, mecha knife. Your golem, uh, yeah, for everything. Yeah, mecha knife life form, for the everything. Name. It's the. It feels Remember so when cool. I said you can mech out with your engine? That is the card yeah. that allows you to do so. That was a pretty good draw uh, by Ginger off the top, getting that second golem. Beautiful combo, wombo combo. Yeah, he gets to uh, both yeah, draw the, and clear. There we go. Twin blade. Impressive technology. And some nice spell boost going. Like, he tackled a lot of pressure soon. Look at this, we're 18 cards left in the deck and we still have a full hand. This is why I love this type of uh, deck. And this is without the sorcerer, by the way. If he had the sorcerer, his plays would be much more explosive. Then needed he needs the the monk a gun wielder, the the one drop to fetch artifacts. Because like he, he has the tools, God. he's just waiting for the artifact to try. Okay, so Gengar's picking up twin blades. He's got the Gilanes, but you know then he'll about to twenty anyway. So <laughs> it's gonna be a grindy game. Uh, important to note is that Gengar, like you were saying. Uh, he must be very scared of Meisha. Absolutely. Would have liked uh, Gengar to be a little bit more efficient there to play the Jebrum Witch first because his hand was full, which means the second Fate's hand cannot be played. Uh, so he could have. There's nothing for eight play points that he could have top decked there that would have made it, you know, I mean, not play the Jebrum Witch. In it my just opinion, makes so. sense. I would have liked him to do this, which will give him more <laughs> <a little laughs> <bit laughs> <here, laughs> <for instance, laughs> Another Gilanese. Might not be too relevant honestly the uh machina rune has no wards right whatsoever yep i travel in search the of the unknown ward would be the mecha gun uh mecha wing angel so technically right, every mecha you. <laughs> has uh, yeah, your still turn. okay even though as far as trading with the twin blade so will a mace be drawn yeah see gengar's like okay i lose the mace right yeah see, but it's not there it's not there and he doesn't have the Serious artifacts problem. still I think here it's acceleration. Do you just take the bit. risk? You because no, 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 you hold on me. to it. No, I don't like this. Because you'd see an extra card. You, you're under no pressure. You don't need to augmentation this turn, right? Oh, like, oh, that's not is going to kill you from 20. That's lethal, right? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. no, that's lethal. He not. drew the, maybe, uh, the Mesha lethal. <laughs> exactly. Maybe Gilnalis would have been lethal there. I, I'd have to do the math. So maybe Dan was forced to do this, honestly. I mean, CPS sometimes enough. you gotta CPS take some risk, enough. I guess. Like, he, he was so <laughs> close to either getting Mesha or Artifact going. Like, once he did get going, I, you know, he was gonna make such a close play. The world has 10, 13, reached 14, its 16, conclusion. 16, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Alright, so, so then, then ties it up, and we're now 1-2-1. One one. See, here's where, like, if he had, like, a Bagworm Cleft, that'd be so good. Uh, instead of he's gonna Evo the Princess, which means Matera will not be... Oh, actually, he's still getting Matera, yeah. Okay, so I like this. Get the Wisp for the, the, the Omnis. And turn 6 again Evo Matera, right? Or even, perhaps, Cynthia. And see, this is what I don't like about uh, Gengar's sequencing. Yes, you were afraid of Kel, but look at this now. Right, you're Kel never gonna dodge the you. Kel. That's yeah. for certain. And now it's just worse because Ilana is on. Matera is pretty good here, though. Does get a full clear. And he also honest, has I, a Mega Claw for future burst. Mm -hmm. Well, to be honest, I wasn't fair, though, because the board would have died anyway. So yeah. technically, that's true. It would be the same amount of health. Like, Ektar would be amazing here, except there's no shadows for it. Mm hmm. So Limonia answers a follower, but you're giving the, the Matera draw again. And then if Gengar goes Wisp on this, like that's such a good board after, right? That's absolutely what he's going to do. Yeah, like he would have a good board and uh, have burst with the Mega Claw the following turn as well. Okay, so on this bounce with both of them. I also like bouncing the Robo Goblin because now you have guaranteed Robo Goblin dull Mega Claw on turn eight, and that's six burst. Granted, obviously, uh, you know, Elana can heal, but he so might not heal above six, punishment. he might heal two six. So, the Ector play is the play for sure here. Uh -huh. But, uh, if he doesn't end with a ward, then he will be dead to double neck claw. And he has to trade his wards in, right? Yep. There's no yep. way around it, unfortunately. 
And you see the power of the Omnis being both, you know, board clear, but also storm damage. Yo, excellent play Some from Gengar. He played very play, aggressive yeah. and it, it paid off for him. Absolutely. Like you see, Mecha Forest having good burst, good mid game, good early game. That was clean. I'm kind of curious now. I would uh, have liked, wish there was a feature to replay the game. Uh, the evil that I mentioned being different, I wonder if that would have lead me into a loss. Yeah. Because the Cal killing the board might have been less damage overall. It wouldn't be a big, a big Cal, but Gengar did do well with the Cal because he's playing Matera. So. Like, it's important to note that, like, Gengar did well that game, and it was against the Alana, the Kel, the Ektar. Like, it's not like Seerfine was making weak plays by any means. Good. Yeah, this is really, really good from, uh, from Seerfine. Like, he's gonna curb out and even just go face. Yeah, I think then he here might have made a small misstep there, but nothing ma ma major. So, Seerfine getting rewarded for actually going face there, uh, gaining two damage. Yeah, it worked that. out for him perfectly. Now we can go super wide, spam the max. Play hoverboard, yeah. Keep his hand size at maximum capacity. Yeah, activating slain, very important. I wish... You wished he would see uh, Hellblaze Demon, obviously. Yeah. Uh, that would be insanely good for that slain next turn. Once again, uh, the one ones being transformed into 8-8s is much more... Yeah, it's so powerful, for sure. He also has double Galmux and way to Proctor. So, that didn't ramp, and he has good follow-up. This is where it gets annoying though. Each one of these 1-1s one are extremely oppressive looking into turn 7. Yeah, they and represent so much is the thing, right? If he, if he is to play the Dragon's Sword, at least he went first, which means that's not a possibility, and he can still use that Galmio to clean up. Uh, slain going phase, that's, that's where we're at. Yep. It's pretty good. And I believe we're also evolving this armor bat, but I'm not sure. Actually, the Evo, yeah, I was gonna say the Evo doesn't even set up lethal with the Mono, so it does make sense to uh, play around Gamyo. Okay, and, so wait, double trade and then face, yes. I like this play a lot, actually, so it, 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 it was worth it to stop and consider there. Okay, what are we looking at now? Uh, you need to find a way to protect yourself. So Poseidon, right? But also deal with the with the slain. That's why Zero like, Finds play was very good. Trade Poseidon Disciple? Seems good. Or is yeah, gonna Galmio? Yeah, yeah, I think it's the Galmio here. Okay, so There's full no clear. Way. Because the mono represents too much uh, potential damage. Also tackle. There's a chance if he plays Poseidon, tackle completely punishes him there. There's yeah. a lot of mechs. He played, keep in mind, he evolved two snake tamers in this game. He played armored bat. So there's about like 12, I'd say, maybe 13. Mechs. Okay, so with Masamune drawn, next turn then can do Poseidon Masamune and then end with 8-8s. Eight that is incredibly powerful. And more importantly, have 1-3. Yeah, 1-3 wards left over, yes. just in case. That said, though, uh, Seerfine is on the aggression and he's had you know, pretty crazy play so far. He can develop a bunch of uh, mechs. I think you're evolving here to avoid, obviously, not giving them... Like, this is really good from Seerfine. Uh, using the evil for sure because you're gonna evil with Mono anyway. But mm -hmm. I think we'll finally see the power of the Poseidon Masamune plus the Dragon Horde. Even if his first dragons are answered, his following turn is Mecha and Angel, which will then summon. That's that's what I'm talking about. There's only three more dragons that then can. Down. Definitely not gonna stick on the board. Shutting down. Okay, so how much is Techno doing? Each uh, Techno's doing 17. 17, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not only that, he gets the buff it too. So to be honest, Almost couldn't deal with this board. <laughs> like, uh, Techno's such a crazy card, right? Important here to play Armored Bat, actually. It's important to play Armored Bat there. Not play the second. <laughs> Obviously, it's not going to play the second because he needs more mechs. Like, There's I've told you, though. More dragons coming. If you don't answer the dragon, they heal back to 8 8s. Yes. It's also important because Good it's kind of awkward cool. for them to deal with a 1 1. But he does have the answer, but, but yeah. Oh! Oh, that's one off. There's one off lethal. I think you just play Mecha Win and then go phase. Yeah. Mecha Win it is. That. And you just go phase, right? No problem. I think then was just surveying the options like. Yeah, like taking his time to make sure. Exactly. You're tough. 
Cool. So, <laughs> Techno is doing how much damage? A million. Still 17. He does have one mono. Whoa, for real? Could trade the bat, get an extra. He's one play again. point short of being able to do mono, <laughs> evil, and techno lord, which would be really strong. Dan was expecting double mono, that's why he was emoting. There's no double mono, you might be happy. Right, because if there was double mono, you trade, and then the two bats, I mean, the two droids clear the ward, and then double mono would kill him. But there is no double mono. Still, still lethal though. Right? Oh, it is. Nice. He saw it. Because I forgot. Um, oh, the mono was uh, buffed, yeah. So Not only that, I forgot good. that um, he was at 9. So in my head, he could only play one mono. Because yeah. I was so stuck to the double mono play. So that was beautifully seen by Zero. Really, really good play. And once again, incredibly close game. So wow, that's actually very close. Yeah. I was I would have not seen that lethal because again fatigue is also a reason. Of course, I like we're tired too, hours. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Casting is a lot harder too. That last game, it looked like Zero Fine was out. He uh, found a way to get in, and then now it's looked like he's just taken over completely. The curse is a blessing now. <laughs> he could just go face with those. It's insane. This yeah. Game. Even if there was a Masamune, a dance only at nine play points. <laughs> yeah, this <is> game. <laughs> Let me tell you, even if there was a massive moon, still a lot of clear. Yeah. You have to keep in mind only massive moon has, has Bane. Bane. <laughs> uh, I mean, like Dragon ramped, and yet it's the Haven player that turn six has a nine ten, a six six, and a nine nine, right? I I I'm just astonished. I I have no words to say. So yeah, if you guys thought the nerfs were too bad, well, we're still it's still it's still this option. Good. I mean, Dan had a really good showing, and that last game again was so, so close. So close, yeah. But Seer Fine, the Haven Specialist, with the Alana on Curve, the Bunny follow up. He's gonna be yeah, just, the Panic to of the Leather Champions. Absolutely. To think Dan was one damage off. Oh, come on, you gotta do it. No! Oh, he should've healed. No. <laughs> should've evoed and healed things. So, uh, again, Panda Global, Seer Fine. Great showing in the SBO, now winning the Panda Cup. Maybe, you know, this will break his second place curse, right? That was his deck saying, all right, you thought this is a curse, you have a, a free, easy game, just play along, we we bless you with this fortune, don't be sad, you're not cursed. It's a close series, like all their games were nice back and forth, those artifacts games too, some really exciting sets, I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed the tournament. Uh, huge shoutouts to Akamaru for casting with me, you know, thank you so much man, I really appreciate it, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. A uh, big shoutouts to, again, Room for the Art, uh, check him out, he's a fantastic artist. Also, uh, thank you to all the players for playing, you know, I could not run the Panic Cup if you guys don't participate. Uh, Shoutouts to all the mods for doing behind the scenes work. I also appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the tournament. Anything you want to say, Aka? If you're a caveman, you haven't seen Lewis <laughs> yet, just follow him on Twitter, follow him on uh, uh, Twitch. Follow me on Twitter too, pg underscore Akamaru Red. And on Twitch, we are streaming daily. We are here to answer all the questions you have. And uh, yeah, feel free to to do so. Thank you very much, Lewis, for the opportunity. It was a blast. I'm very glad I can say this before, but now that it's over, I can. I'm very glad this is your final one. Uh, the PG boys representing and uh, we are two now. Two Panic Ups in our, yeah. in our own, in now our we own have uh, pockets. Akamara 1-1, one, one, yeah. Zero Fine 1-1. One, one. You guys had a rigged. pretty good show. This is a rigged yeah. Panic Up. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the show and I'll see you guys on Monday. Once again, big shout out to Akamara. Hope you had fun, man, because uh, it, it was a blast. Alright, I'll see you guys Monday.